Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Solutions with Courtney Anderson. I am your host, Courtney Anderson. We have a, a very exciting show today, and I'm just overwhelmed, actually, <laughs> with excitement in general, because there's so many topics that, that, that I have lined up and that we're going to begin to integrate into uh, the CourtneyAnderson.com uh, blog and discussion forum. So there's a lot coming down the pipeline, and it's, a, it's just kind of a thrilling and nervous time, uh, but I am really, really looking forward to what is to come uh, in, in the future. So that's perfect. Because today, the topic of our show is regrets. And, and this is something that, you know, I was sitting there and I have so much that I want to cover. And I'm, I'm sort of trying to go ahead and, and, and put down the lineup of the upcoming shows. And, and there were a lot of really specific issues that I want to delve into. But this concept, this sort of general overview of regret is something that permeates so many different topics. So I thought that would be a great uh, kick kick off and, and start of, of this next run of shows. So that's the topic, regrets. And, and we're looking at the question of, do we all have some? What's their impact? And is it possible? I mean, is it really possible in real life not to have any? So... One of the things that has brought this to the forefront and I thought was a, a great overview for just a sort of a broad show is the concept of what's the impact of regret. And, of course, the idea of a regret is it's something that when you, when you think about your life um, and you're looking backward, it's something that you feel shame or pain or disappointment or bitterness or anxiety. Um, in regards to, and so there's a there's a couple of different parts of this that we want to we want to focus on as we begin to delve into this whole sort of broad umbrella topic, which later we'll we'll have different shows and programs on more specific issues, but sort of regret in general, and some of it comes from the the idea that we're you know to have regret we have to be looking backwards. We don't typically have the concept that it's that it's possible to have regret about the future. Um, sometimes we feel that we'll sort of project into the future what we think will happen. We'll think, oh, I didn't, I didn't um, get that job, so now my future is, you know, is going to be horrible and bleak, and and I'm I'm going to have to, you know, uh, move into a different. Um, you know, area because I can't afford to live where I want to live. And so you sort of project out what you think will happen and then you sort of work backwards from there and then start feeling regret about things that actually haven't happened. Um, and that's a whole different scenario where people get so locked in a narrative about what they are convinced will happen in the future. And then because there's a, there's a strong relationship between sort of your expectations and your behavior and what happens in the future. So, you know, in a very simplistic uh, sense, if, if I, you know, I'm a young person and I, I'm, in, I'm in middle school or junior high and I've got a big test coming up, a big exam, a big exam. But you know what? It's in a, it's in a class where, you know, I really don't like the teacher and, and I just don't, I just don't want to, I just don't want to study. I don't want to study at all. I just don't feel like it, which is, you know, my choice. And so I, I know the big exam is coming up. And I, I, I'm like, I'm not going to study. I just, you know, I'm not going to study at all. Forget about that. All right, fine. And so because I don't study at all, then more likely than not, I have influenced the outcome of the, of the test score. So even though I don't have control over the future, I do have control over some of the, some of the input that I, that, I, that I put forward that will heavily influence the output that I do, that I do receive. So people do get in these, these sort of um, vicious cycles where they make decisions and then they engage in behaviors to support those decisions. And then they get the outcome that they, that they claimed that was sort of predestined without, I think, stopping to, to pull apart the whole, the whole formula and see, well, yeah, you got a bad exam grade because you refused to study. You refused to study because you hate the class. But somewhere in there, 
there were things you could have done differently if you wanted a different outcome. So looking for a moment at the reality of regret based on what actually has happened and not based on what someone is projecting will happen and then utilizing all of their behavior uh, to try to bring about, let's just look at the first section where someone the, – the, the, the issue has actually um, transpired. It's, it's happened. They do regret the thing. It really did happen. And these can be personal and these can be professional. And you tend to hear a lot of regrets about, and there's tons of cliches and, you know, even motivational posters and material. You know, you don't regret the thing that you did. You only regret the thing that you didn't try. Um, you never regret uh, spending too much time with your family and loved ones. Uh, you, you know, you'll you'll only regret spending too much time on the office and, and this whole type of thing. Okay, so one of the foundations of our program, of course, and everything we do is about this concept of being pragmatic, what works in the world as is. And all of us are different to some, to some degree. You know, there are individual differences. And so I, I would argue this. The cliches only work for you if, if, that's, if, if that sort of generic m mindset is, is applicable to who you are. In other words, I've met uh, and had the pleasure in working with and knowing personally many people who love what they do. And I mean love it. They love their work. Now, it might be um, that they are uh, a professional athlete or there's someone who uh, has started a literacy program that meant so much to them and they've just given it all their time and energy. It could be someone who absolutely loves gardening and they've found a way to make gardening and gardening-related education the focus of what they do so all of the time they're basically doing their their things that they would do for free and most of the people that I've interacted with who really love what they do really really love it I mean they the passion the zeal the energy the excitement is legitimate and most of these people would do what they do for free and and often have those types of people tend to have sort of a seamless relationship between their love, their passion, their joy, and then what they do at some point um, that does generate revenue. And so sort of the argument that they're going to regret that they, you know, that they, quote, work too, too much um, isn't really appropriate because their work isn't some separate, discrete thing that they do because they have to. It's not something they do as a means to an end. It's something that they do usually that they created or thought of themselves or had a lot of input into to bringing to fruition because they love it anyway. It's just something that they really are, you know, they're into it and they love it. It's fun for them. So, you know, it's not like some separate, I have to do this thing so that I can get the resources to go over here and do my real life with my family or friends. And so I'm, I'm sort of taking away from my pleasure and my joy to go do this work thing. And so I think for that group, all of this sort of con the concept of, oh, oh you just put too much into your work. It's not really appropriate. Their work is their love, is their passion. It, it's, it makes them happy. So that's one group. The other group of people are the group that, they're, that work really is a means to it. There's, there, there's nothing else out of it other than just um, maybe there are things that can make it less awful. Maybe they get a better chair or a slightly better uh, work schedule or maybe they're um, given um, a little bit of a, of, a, of a salary increase, but there's nothing in it that that is their joy. And so to them, it, taking the time to, quote, work really is taking time away from their passion, their energy, the things that they dream about that make them happy. That is a totally different. So our concept is regret. Looking for a minute at the group of people that are focused on regret of things that actually have already transpired. So this is the backward-looking group. And looking at the backward-looking group focusing on, let's just do professional since we're focusing on that right now, the people who regret, oh, I wish I'd gone and gotten more education. I wish I'd gone to a different um, training program or school program. I wish I'd worked a little harder in that program. I wish I'd applied for, for a certain opportunity, but I never did, and the deadline passed, and so here I am. I actually was um, – Recently, reading an article in a in a, in a in a in a in a newspaper, and it was talking about people who had uh, regrets about not completing uh, their high school education. 
and as they were older and sort of looking back it 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 for many of the people that were that were being interviewed having a lack of a high school education um a primary secondary school education it did negatively impact their economic opportunities from from the from the vantage point you know being down the road uh and looking forward in their maybe in their 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s they look backwards and they think my goodness I wish I had finished um my high school um education and because they didn't it had impacted to a large extent their economic opportunities and because of that impact there was there was some regret that was expressed um in this in this um, media article that they that they felt that because of the um diminished economic opportunities and that impacted everything in their lives it impacted where they lived um how much they could spend on housing how much they could spend on entertainment how much they could spend on their own uh, children and grandchildren helping them in life and it just became this 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 uh the ramifications and the ripples like a ripples in a pond the ripples throughout their lives of these choices, then they, they sort of amplify. And as time goes by, it, it, the the impact of a long-ago decision. So somebody's, you know, 55 years old and they're looking back and they're, they're, they're regretting that they didn't finish, finish high school because the ripples kept continued in, in their mind to the, to the very day. So for decades, and it just sort of amplifies because everything – they they argue you could trace back to that because had they finished that opportunity, then they probably could have either um, progressed in their education or training, or they could have been eligible for high paying uh, jobs and opportunities or promotions, and and then they feel that their current situation is so heavily impacted by these long ago choices that that the regret that's the, the sort of the ne- negative ramification it's it's gotten larger and larger and larger in in their lives to the fact that they become in real life beyond the scope of the, the article I was reading reporting some statistics um and i believe it was about two thirds of people in the survey were saying regretted not finishing uh, high school beyond that the issue is emotionally for people that I've met in life and, and had the opportunity to cross paths with who um, express explicit examples of regret. You meet them and you've known them, you know, an hour and they're they're sharing with you some of their regret that they, you know, didn't finish this program or they didn't obtain this credential or they didn't take this opportunity to 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 do what they wanted. As time goes by what 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 my interpretation is of what happens is that long ago regret, it's just, you know, like a little seed, like a little seed uh, of a big tree. You know, they plant the regret. They could have planted the regret, you know, 30 years ago. And then and then they've watered it. They've watered it almost daily, right, with, with looking back and thinking about that regret. I wish I hadn't done that. If only or I, if only that hadn't happened, everything would be different now. Everything would be different. And then they so they so they plant it and then they water it. Uh, and then they feed it uh, that little seed of, of regret, and over time, especially over over long periods of time relative to the human lifespan, it just seems like it it grows, it, it takes root, it spreads, it permeates everything in their lives. And then many of you are also you know exploring and thinking about your own personal experiences and people that you have known or come into contact with were, like I said, within you know, a short amount of time of meeting these people, they are sharing with you all these regrets. And the perspective of the person observing that, that is that there's so much anger and there's so much bitterness. And it almost it almost radiates from the person, especially when they start to describe the getting closer to the core issue, right? So you'll meet somebody new, right? And they're sort of talking and you can sort of, you know, pick up from their body language and to and from the, their tone of voice that they're not a particularly um, happy or content person. That's cool. Everybody has days like that, right? We're we're not a we're not necessarily feeling the the, the positive uh, rays of the universe. We all have those days, but some people it's it's a it's a it's a pervasive, almost to their core of their being. This concept of the of the ripple effects. Of the of the of the extended time period of watering and feeding their initial core um, regretful issue, and it, it's become everything in their lives. 
So not just that they regret that thing that happened back there then, but because they also perceive that it has impacted everything in their life today, right? Like they wouldn't be in this room with you right now if it hadn't been for that thing back there that happened. And and it tends to be sort of like a 360 degree, right? A complete totality of everywhere they look in their lives. It's everything is just it's just a, a disaster because of this 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 regret. It has grown and it has, has spread out, and I, I think their perception is that now everything is poisoned by this, right? They're in this room with you, meeting you, this new stranger in life, and letting you know that they're angry and they're bitter and they're upset. And, and I think their perspective is they wouldn't be in this room, right? They wouldn't be meeting you, right? They wouldn't be wearing the outfit they're wearing. They wouldn't be, you know, eating the food they're eating. They wouldn't weigh the weight they weigh. They wouldn't make the money they make. They wouldn't have the the, the retirement options that they have. You know, they wouldn't live in the place they live in. They wouldn't have the dog they have. Like, none of this would have happened, right? The life that they're living isn't the life they should be living. Like, the life they should be living in their, in their head, in their, in their projection of who they believe they are or they should be, there's this huge gap between that and their reality. And even though we just met them, right? Like, I don't know. We meet somebody, and all we, all we know and all we see is what is at that moment. I don't know what happened to somebody, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago or, to be really honest, 10 minutes ago. Like, I don't know. All I see is this. But the people who have made the choice and decision that regret, that's, that's their – that's, I think, the core of their experience. At a certain point, that is their identity. It becomes so – overwhelming, that it, it, it obliterates, it erases anything else that may have been or anything that you could ask about the future. So in some interactions I've had with people who are in this um, frame of mind, anything that I try to ask positive, you know, ask somebody, oh, okay, they'll say, you know, that, that they're single, which I think is a wonderful thing. I, I'm a single lady. I don't think anything is inherently horrible, right? Right? That's just an opportunity for change and something awesome to happen. Um, and then I'll ask something like, oh, okay, well, are you, you know, are you dating? Or are you, are you planning to date? And I'll get the most angry responses, you know, no, of course not. You know, and it's like, wow, okay, um, sensitive issue. But it's like this. I look at it like if you're unhappy about something, right? And I'm assuming that they're unhappy about, you know, being single because they, they mentioned it in sort of a negative way then it won't change if you don't do anything about it. But I think people become so wedded to the idea that it's all, everything is gone. Every opportunity is gone. Everything that they should have been or could have been was ruined at some point in the past. And now, because of that, everything in the, in the current situation is awful and there's no hope for the future. And when I start to have interactions with people like this, you know, it's, it's, it's disheartening for me. It's, 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 it saps my energy because let's say that they're accurate. Let's say that at some point that this perception is that this is this is accurate. You you make a choice in life. It's not the choice you wish you would have made. It's not the choice that ideally you, you would have liked to have made. And now because of that, everything is ruined. Everything in your current life it's just it's just it's ruined, permanently ruined. Nothing you can do about it. And no matter how much longer you live, no matter how much longer you live, it, that's all ruined too. There is no future. Because it's all doomed. Because this horrible thing happened. The regret is stemming from that. There's nothing that can be done. The future is also predestined to be horrible. And I guess then all, all we have to do is just sort of literally count down hours until the final hour comes. And I guess we're free of it, of this sort of miserable existence. That's, that's an option and that may be accurate. They may be correct with that. I, I don't know. I don't have definitive proof. I don't personally want that to be the only option. And so part of the discussion of regret is I would like a different option because if all I can do is sit here and wait until I die where I'll be free of the horrible misery of this of this yucky life I have with these horrible things that I don't like because of my regret, I find that to be a bleak and really depressing option. And I would prefer, if there's any way that, that I don't have to do that, to find some other choice because what would be the point in just sitting here being miserable and then going around and, I, and as I've talked about in so many you know programs over the years um, so many people in this position of the regret fueled uh, life and perspective 
I I genuinely believe at some point. I I don't know when the fl- I don't know when the switch flipped. I think at some point along their narrative, they plant the seed of regret, they water the seed, you know, they feed it with, with good, high-quality soil, and, and then it sprouts and it grows. I think at some point, whether it's conscious or not, at some point they wake up one day, and on that day they decide, my only mission from here on out in life is to spread, spread, wide and Deep as I can and as high as the mountains and the clouds. My only mission in life is to spread the misery and the pain that I feel inside throughout the rest of the world. I mean, I might be over um, dramatizing it for effect, but I really do believe at some point that becomes the mission in life. That's it. That's the only mission. It's not necessarily to reflect on what what transpired in the past, the initial uh, issue of regret. It honestly, at some point, is on a. It's like a mission. You know, they become an evangelist, and their whole purpose is to spread misery and pain everywhere they go, everywhere they go. And I've met so many people everywhere in the world who are really good at this. Um, that I that it's it's it certainly is a choice. And again, I, I respect the choices adults make. If 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 there's contentment in this, if if underneath sort of this this, this sort of um, primary layer of sort of bitterness, regret, anger, apprehension, if below that is really some sort of sense of serenity and contentment and joy, and then they just sort of layer on top the the bitterness and anger as a way to sort of I don't know relate to the world. If it's true that underneath that they are content, then I I respect that. I respect that. And I, all I can do then, I guess, is support it. If they really are feeling, um, again, some contentment and a little bit of peace, and then they just sort of layer on top of it this sort of almost exoskeleton, exoskeleton of, of anger and bitterness to project to the world, but underneath it, inside, they really are content, then, then I, I can only support that because the, the whole purpose is, of course, practicing, you know, the joyful art of, Mostly we focus on, on business or business-related issues, but it's all about the, the joyful and the art part of life. So if there really is joy underneath there, then great. Okay. My suspicion is that for some, if not not the majority, if not all, of the people who, who have built their lives around this framework of regret, that there really isn't any joy underneath the, the shell, that it's just more anger and bitterness and um, disappointment and fear and hurt. And if that's the case, then I'm then I am going to argue that there's got to be an opportunity for self-examination and potentially different choices for different outcomes. Because what was the point of, of just sitting and sort of marinating in pain? Um, I understand that we all do that. We all do that um, when things happen that that hurt us. But if we never leave that space, and if we just decide to literally just sit there in, in the pain and in the in the backward focus, disappointment and hurt for the rest of our lives, then what? So many opportunities we've passed up just for a little bit of peace, you know. And and I I just I you know I ache actually. It, it sounds you know a bit over the top, but I really do. I I just what a what a waste. Of the time, you know, on this on this earth, and and of the of the capability, and and the potential of people. So, our, our question is regret. The the main folks for this episode has been those who are who are who are, who are, who are you know backwardly looking on things, focusing on things that did happen. They didn't take the job. They wish they'd gotten more education. Um, they regret the field that they went to. I mean, a lot of those people, right? They're 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 an attorney, they're an engineer, and they wish they weren't. All they do is talk about how horrible it is, and they hate that field, and they hate that profession. Um, it, it just, wow. Uh, and and then a lot of them also feel in their personal life they they married the wrong person, or didn't marry the right person, um, or shouldn't got married at all, or you know, it's just. I, you, I never understand it. I never understand who perceives is in control of the choices. Now, I understand that as children, we have very few choices, if any at all, right? Because we, we start off in the world, we have no choices. We're literally helpless. We need somebody to feed us and someone to, to, to clean us and, and to, 
to change us because we can't do anything. We're humans are just um, we're not very uh, capable um, at birth of much. And then as we progress over time, over an extended period of time, compared to some other species, we are able to gain more more independence and more autonomy and, and more skills so that we can begin to do more things for ourselves. But as an adult, at a certain point, we start to make our own choices. And I certainly understand that we, as young people, as young adults, when we first are kind of legally and, and free out in the world to do what we want to, we don't necessarily make great choices because – you know, you might be a, a, a person in your late teens or, or in early 20s. You don't really know what you're doing necessarily. But there is a, a juncture where we begin to take more and more um, control of the choices. So, you know, what kind of job we work, what kind of schooling we get. When we don't like a job, it, we should leave. When we're in a relationship with someone who doesn't respect us and value us, in, in a romantic relationship, it's not the right person. And And I think that a lot of the regret comes from these fears, all of these fears – and we let the fear beat us, right? So you, you, the idea, well, you know, better the enemy I know. So you just stay with someone that you're miserable with. Or you stay in a job that you hate because the fear of the unknown, right? And this idea, well, the grass looks like it's greener on the other side, but it really isn't. It's horrible over there, and this is horrible too. But I'll just stay here. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I do know this. You know, I have as many fears, probably more fears than most people because, you know, we all have different paths in life. I'm frightened all the time. Sometimes petrified, and I'll either sit somewhere, and sometimes if it's really scary, I'll get you know on the on the floor in a fetal position almost. I'll just think I am scared to death. I am just scared to death. I have no clue what's going to happen, and I, and I'm almost always doing things by myself, so I don't have any one else to sort of help me if my ideas are disasters. Um, but you know, I've never let the fear win. I have to say this. There have been long stretches of time when things have been really bad in my life and things have happened beyond my control where I probably couldn't function well just because I was overwhelmed with with not good things that have happened. But I've always sat and thought at some point I have a choice. And if I make the choice that I'm going to try something, move to a new town, start a new business, uh, apply for a job, uh, try learning a new task, the fear is there. And like I said, I'm scared all the time. But I, I never let the fear stop me. I always close my eyes and I just jump. If you envision like a deep pool, right? And even though I don't know what's in there in that deep pool, or there's sharks probably, I'm scared of that. Um, I don't know. But I just think if I want to try this, I can't let the fear stop me because I'll never do anything. And I just close my eyes and I just jump. And then I always think, you know, if it's horrible, if it's scary and horrible, I'll just go back. I'll go back to what I was doing before. Or something close to it. But I, I never want to be in the position where I look backwards and I think, oh, I didn't try that thing and who knows what could have happened. Something great could have happened. So I just jump. It might, it might be foolish. I, I don't, you know, I don't know. But I do know this. And when I do meet people and, and I talk to people sometimes and I say something like, oh, you know, I don't really have any regrets. It, I get kind of not nice looks and people sometimes look at me like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, but I'm really not kidding. I mean, there's, there's little things here and there, the things I'm mad at myself about, things I'm disappointed that I could have done better. Um, but overall, if there's something I've wanted to do in life, I jump. I just did it. And I didn't just do it capriciously with no plan. We talk a lot about planning. We talk a lot about that in our program, so I'll go in more depth. But I never let the fear stop me because why not? I'm here, and I'm going to do everything I can to see what I'm, what I'm capable of. So I just close my eyes, and I just jump. And And I have to say it's one of the things that, no matter how things turn out in the long run in my life, I'm proud of. So my argument would be that we don't have to live in this regret-driven focus, that we have different choices. And I encourage you to explore your motivation and face your fear. I, jo- I thank you so much for joining me here at Solutions with Courtney Anderson. Of course, come to CourtneyAnderson.com and join in at any time. And thank you again so much.